to join us on, on today's House and the Hive session. Um, obviously, I think I knew most of you already on today's, but um, for those of you who don't know us already, my name is Jacob. I'm a digital strategist at Prodo. So I worked with the agency for uh, just over three years now um, and started as an account manager in what was then the Prodo housing team. So um, quite close to and sort of um, up to speed with the challenges and, and ambitions of the housing sector and how we can help you guys. So this is just a session we put together around sort of lockdown one to connect like-minded people and to how you have best to sort of use digital to help with, um, uh, I suppose, to help sort of run customer experience and operate more effectively using sort of digital and everyone working from home, et cetera. And since then, it's grown into this sort of community that we run webinars fortnightly, sometimes topics run by ourselves at Prodo, sometimes um, client guest speakers. We've had RBH and Harper, you've joined us for one from Cotsway um, and a few others. And like like today, we've got we've got Yaniv. So, um, yeah, so Yaniv um, has a long, long history of being involved in digital roles across the globe. And I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself shortly, mate, as well. Um, but yeah, clearly have a great passion for it. Um, I know you spent three years running at HubSpot. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you were one of the first person at Dublin office to implement video across sales and marketing, was it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was the first person back in 2016. 2016. And then as of uh, Jan 2020, you need to move over to Vidyard to run and grow the EMEA partnership program. Um, and we love Vidyard as a tool at Prodo. Um, we've been using it for a while in the sales process. So if you've requested a website audit from Prodo, if you've seen any of the Hive promo videos from, from myself, you've probably seen my face and some Vidyard videos. Um, and yeah, it's something that we're rolling out at the moment to the growth team as well. So those of you who already work with us at Prodo, um, you'll be seeing some videos from your account handlers in the coming weeks as well, um, sharing some ideas and sort of um, a few, uh, you know, how to use certain things in CMS or, or what have you, those sorts of things. Um, but yeah, it's your new sort of enthusiasm for video and the benefit of implementing video across businesses, which is why we've invited him to talk to you guys today. So you need the one with all the goodness, the info today. So I won't take up any more time. I know we've got 45 minutes in the diary. So I'll, um, I'll hand over to you, mate, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Let me just um, share my screen and then I'll do a quick intro here. One second. Sure thing. All right. I'll go to present mode. Just making sure that everybody can see this. Yeah, right. There we go. Can we? Got it. Yeah, we're good. Perfect. So, um, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to another Housing Hive session. I'm very excited to be part of uh, this session that I, that I got invited. Um, I'm Yaniv. Um, I'm a partner manager at uh, Vidyard. Basically, I'm a full-time video evangelist and how to use video uh, to communicate with prospects and customers. And the goal for me for today is to hopefully inspire you how you can start using video to delight customers with, um, in this case, with residents, but in general, with everybody that's surrounding your organization, how and why you should be considering to use video in your communication with clients. Um, so we're going to get started with that. And before I show an agenda, um, I won't continue on the intro of my, I wanted to just pose a question. Nobody has to go off of mute, uh, but um, just find the chat pane. And I'm gonna, just going to ask a question. Take your best guess what this is, what you're seeing in the screen right now. Just type it in the chat, whatever you think this is. Tracker, okay, very good. Anybody else? Just try to find the chat brain, biscuit, okay. Greg Sasa Troll. <laughs> See if anybody else, if you can find a chat just to give a little bit of an insight here to what you think. I've got a few coming through direct. We've got pastry again. Ancient tablet of stone or bread dough. Bread dough, plaster molding. Okay, let's see if anybody else, Pierre, any, Aher, any other original ones? Okay, some sort of dough. All right, very good. Hieroglyphics, Shauna, like that. Getting closer and closer. Okay, very good. Thanks for all the answers here. So what you're currently seeing in the screen is the first written 
customer service complaint ticket known to man. Etched in stone is from 1750 BC from Mesopotamia, okay? Um, and it's from a, a merchant called Nani who wanted to buy high grade silver from a merchant called a uh, Nasir. And then instead of getting high grade, high grade silver, he got some really crappy copper instead. So he wrote a complaint and we don't know exactly what happened, but we have records, or at least we saw the records afterwards um, that uh, Ian Nasir that made that fake, that sold that fake good, fake good, he went out of business. So this is the first written customer service complaint ticket, okay? Reason why I'm bringing this up, obviously things have changed. We're now way further ahead, 4,000 years later. Right? But the fun fundamental concept of expecting a specific service from your customer right, and um, having a specific level of communication where you feel like you're getting what was promised to you or that you're getting the level of attention that you need right, is an age old motion here. And my goal for today is really to try to show you how we can now start using modern methods, specifically video, to actually communicate with our customers, to deal, for example, with customer complaints, all the way to how you can actually start using video to delight your customer so you don't get the, uh, you know, the new, new age equivalent of these, of these complaint tickets from 1750 BC, okay? So that's just an intro for the start for today, what we're gonna be looking at. So um, the agenda for today, I should actually adjust this to, 20, to 2021, apologies for that. Uh, but the agenda for today is the customer exper service experience in 2020. That's where we're going to look at first. Secondly, we're going to look at why we should actually start using video for a better customer service experience. Okay. Thirdly, we're going to talk about the impact of video on NPS, right? For the people that don't know what NPS is, it's net promoter score. Net promoter score means the likelihood that um, your customer or, 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 or um, residents or tenants are going to recommend your services to friends, family, and colleagues, right? It's typically a range between minus 100 and plus 100. We'll look at what the impact of video is on growing that net promoter score. And then finally, I'll leave you with some key takeaways. Feel free to ask questions whenever you want within the chat, okay, if you have any of them, but we'll get started now. Okay, so first of all, we're going to talk about the customer service experience. Well, in in this age, right, 2021, it's still from 2020. And the first thing that we're going to be talking about is the company that basically has set the trend for what engagement with a company should look like. And that's Amazon, right? Amazon walks on three pillars when we're looking to make a purchase with Amazon. That's immediacy, quality, and the ease of engagement, right? That's what they're doing. Obviously, there are some horror stories sometimes when it doesn't work well, but Amazon made it so easy with a one click to make a purchase, right? They have a very strong customer service that if you're not happy or you want to do a return, it's very easy. Typically, you get reimbursed very quickly before even uh, the merchant reimbursed and it's ease of engagement. You can communicate via chat, via email, via phone, right? By uh, whatever measure that you want and you typically get to either the customer service web or the product as, quick, as quickly as you want. That's probably one of the main pillars why they exploded so quickly in the market. They made it so easy for people to buy and engage with the company, right? So they set the bar for us, right? They set the bar for us in terms of wanting to feel immediacy, right? Wanting to feel like, hey, I have a company that can immediately react to me, right? And if we don't meet this bar, right? The customer becomes very vocal, right? So if we don't get good customer service, right? The, the, um, the level of being vocal as a customer has never been higher than before. Obviously, this is because mostly because of social media. It's very easy to hate on Twitter, right? So a couple stats here which are interesting is that a customer experience from a reach perspective, right? If, you, if a customer, right, a resident has a negative experience, right? it will reach 15 people. So it will be spread to 15 people. Oh, I had a terrible experience with our provider here versus positive experiences with our, which are only shared with 11 people. Still a lot, right? So people are even becoming more vocal when the customer experience is negative, being shared with 15 different people, okay? Second stat, interesting. 
customers that take revenge on social media after a terrible customer experience. So quick question on, on the chat, yes or no in the chat. Have you ever publicly criticized any type of service provider, right? We're talking here about Sky, Broadband, whatever it is that, that you had. Has anybody taken it out on LinkedIn or on Twitter or on Facebook regarding a bad customer experience? Just type in the chat, yes or no. Anybody want to share who? <laughs> From Matt, who is yours for? Oh, I'm interested. Okay, okay. Virgin, Virgin. I had a problem with, with, with Virgin planes one time badly as well. I considered also bashing them, but I ended up not doing it. I should have done it. <laughs> Anybody else? Laura, maybe? Sean? The Okay, so obviously a uh, some of you have had have taken this revenge, so you, you become very vocal, right? And what we also found in a very inter interesting study, and we have references for all these uh, data points, and you'll get this slide deck as well, is that um, four out of five customers say the experience with a vendor, right, or with a supplier is as imp important as the product that's being purchased. So you can have a fantastic product, obviously, but if your service is terrible, it doesn't matter how good your product is, right? And a lot of people are actually valuing that customer experience equally to the quality of the product, okay? As a result of being more vocal, the customer also leaves quicker, right? So in the US, this is US data, I, I don't have EMEA data, unfortunately, but may, they make an estimate that annually companies lose $62 billion in revenue because of a poor customer experience. And their 17% says that customers stop doing business with that vendor or with that supplier only after one bad experience, right? And a third of customers actually say that they would switch after only one bad experience, okay? So one, Amazon sets the bar for what communication should be like with your customers, right? That we all have to live up to in terms of speed, ease of use communication, right? And if you, we don't live up to that, customers become vocal, especially regarding negative experiences, and they tend to turn it back on us and leave quicker, right? So that's really where video comes in to actually change the game and be able to delight that customer to hit and even surpass that bar, right? A lot of you will be familiar with this graph right here, or I imagine some of you will be. This is from HubSpot. It's the flywheel. It's essentially HubSpot model that says all customer facing teams are working together, right? Marketing, sales, and service to attract initially leads, engage them, and eventually have them as customers, but then delight them as customers, okay? The place, and maybe this is a, another question, right? Where in this area, right? Where in, in, in this graph, where do you think we can generate the majority of our new customers, our new business? Is it in the attract phase, right? Which is typically something that marketing does. Is it in the engage phase where typically sales closes deals or is it typically in the delight phase where customer service and support is coming in? Where do we actually start generating the majority of our new clients and new revenue? Just type in the chat if you think it's in the attract, engage or in the delight phase. Okay, the lights were happy customer referrals. Okay, anybody else? I'll go with you there, Rosie. All three, fair point. All three. Anita says the lights. So Sophie says I agree, the light phase. Yeah. So to Matthew's point, okay, Barbara saying attract. Attract, if you can give a good glimpse of the delight to follow. Okay, very interesting that you're thinking about that. That's also a very good point. Sean says, can't decide, delight. Okay, so most of you are saying delight. Um, Barbara's saying attracts. Matthew is saying all three. To some point, some degree, you can say you can always make an argument for all three. You can always make a, an, an argument for engage. You can definitely also make an, an argument for attract. But where we see 
that companies are really accelerating their growth, right? And generating the majority of their new business is for sure in the delight phase, right? And the reason for that is, is if your friends, your colleagues, your family say, wow, I had such an amazing experience with this vendor, with this service provider, um, with, with, with this landlord, with this person, right? The likelihood that that person is going to get new business and referral business. And a lot of us have actually grown our businesses by having referral business. It's the number one factor to actually generate new opportunities, right? Especially in the situation when we know that um, salespeople, right? So in the engage phase are the least trustworthy source of information, right? So the question here is, this comes from HubSpot, says compared to 10 years ago, which of the following do you consider to be the most trustworthy source of information? Salespeople, 3%, they're in trouble, we're in trouble, right? Marketing content, right? So to your point, right? The attract face and what the light looked like, it's about 10%. But the majority of people says, look, reviews online, or recommendations from friends and family, that's what makes it source trustworthy and makes me make a decision. Which brings us to the second stat here. Very few companies are actually perceived as customer first and are actually delighting customers. So when our question is asked, what do you think when a business says, I sold for the customer or we put the customer first? We hear that all the time, right? All companies say that, right? Only 12% really believes it. 69% somewhat believes it and 90% doesn't believe it at all. So all of these measures, all of these moments, first of all, we need to build trust. Sales and marketing are being trusted less and less, right? Reviews and recommendation being trusted more and more and a delightful customer experience. So that's where video comes in. Yeah? So in comes video for customer experience or customer relationships, okay? So that's what we're gonna be looking at. And I'm gonna make an argument for why all these types of videos that you're using in the screen, where you can just record yourself, put yourself in front of a camera, how that actually helps you to delight your customers. And in your case, obviously residents. So why use video for a better customer experience? Okay. First of all, we are primed for video. Okay. If we look right now at the history of video consumption throughout time, today we're at the peak of ever, right? It especially got accelerated with COVID, right? Um, we're on Netflix, we're on YouTube, every second or third post on LinkedIn is a video, right? We're on in Instagram stories. We see it in blogs. We start seeing it in B2B. Jacob mentioned that they are obviously, Proto is using video to communicate with, with clients and prospects alike all the time. So what that means is, is that if we're all communing, communicating with video, then so do our customers, right? So do our residents, so do our prospects. So there is a gap currently, right, between the way we actually communicate with them, which is often text-based or sometimes on the phone, versus the way that people actually want to communicate, which is via visual content, video content. So that's the first reason why we should consider about why to use it, okay? Then there are three other reasons why you should start considering using video in your communication with your residents or with prospects or with clients in general, right? Three main buckets that you see here at the top. One, cliche as it sounds, saves time and money. I'm going to talk to you about that, what that means. Two, it increases CSAT. CSAT is customer satisfaction. I'm going to talk about that. And the third one, it actually allows you to engage ambassadors and find ambassadors um, to create content for you in a visual way as well. And because of that, delight and start spreading the word about how amazing your services are. Okay. So from a saving time and money perspective, three terms that you're seeing here, okay, Increase FCR. FCR means first call resolution. Okay. Reduce AHT means average handling time. Okay. In case deflection means a deflection. Okay. So what in, in a scenario, maybe for residents, obviously I don't know the market as well as you're you're in, but if somebody has a specific issue, they might need to do a, a phone call, stay on the line, wait for half an hour and wait for an hour, right? They might then get an answer that says, hey, maybe you need to share some additional documentation or follow up or give another call. So what tends to happen is, is that the experience prolongs constantly, right? Because the, the person, the resident has specific information, right? That they need, but they don't get it straight away from the phone or they can't find it online, which means that we have multiple touch points until we actually resolve a specific communication interaction with the customer, right? 
in with video what works so effectively is that we can actually reduce what we call the, the metric of first call resolution, meaning first touch resolution. And the way we do it is by creating videos that are accessible on demand where residents or customers in general can educate themselves on the solution that they're looking for. Right? If we're looking at knowledge databases and FAQs, right? These are huge databases of information. And I'm sure that a lot of you, when people call in right, to you, 90% of the things that they're asking are the same type of questions over and over and over again. So why would we hog up time of all these people on the phone, right, of your people to speak to these residents, right, with questions that they can self-serve themselves on the answer? And video is an, a very effective method to make show instead of just tell of how they can solve a specific issue or how they have, uh, they, they want to address specific payments or if they have any other questions that are relevant. So the reason why that is, and I hear on the right side, some, some, interesting, some interesting gifts, right? Would you rather write in a piece of text or explain on the phone how to tie a bow? Or would you rather make a video step-by-step -step showing how to do it? Or same with changing oil in an engine or adjusting something in the engine. So visual is so much more powerful to make it so easy for the customers to understand how they can resolve. Okay, what that means is that the average handling time goes down because you can allow people to self-serve with visual content, which then as a result means that you can deflect cases, right? You don't need to get people anymore on the phone because you can, they have a database of videos that they can actually access that are going to educate themselves. So now time frees up to really solve those specific issues where a phone or a Zoom call is actually necessary. Salesforce, what they do is, um, a, a, as a customer, just to give uh, to give a case, they have about two, 2 million hours of video that are being watched worldwide, okay? And what they did with creating video content as do-it-yourself libraries is they deflected 300,000 tickets per month for Salesforce to help in training, okay? So what they did is they self-created all this self-serve content, which then drove a ton of satisfied customers that they now didn't have to serve. That helped them with a huge ROI, freeing up time for support reps to actually focus on those problems where a human was needed, okay? Second, this is gonna be a very important one for you as well. It increases customer satisfaction, okay? Video humanizes, which is really great. Video humanizes both bad and good experiences, right? So, if somebody had a bad experience with you, right? Whatever reason, right? We can actually create a video and show our face and say, hey, look, we're, we're humans. We're trying to resolve your situation, right? Or if we had a good experience where we resolve the situation, we can actually say, hey, I'm so glad that we could help you out in your specific scenario. We can do this much more effectively, much better than sending out a piece of text saying, hey, happy we got this resolved or getting mad at each other on an email because somebody didn't understand or getting you know, people mad on the phone and not resolving that situation. We can use a video to humanize and say, look, there is another human on the other side of the phone right, that is trying to resolve your situation. Bear, bear with me. What it secondly does is it allows you to go the extra mile in a unique way when you're communicating with, with, with customers or with residents, right? Um, you're doing something unique and often it's actually less effort. So instead of typing that email to resolve a situation, right, we can actually create a video often quicker and it humanizes it. So, and thirdly, you respect people's time because now you can say, Hey, we're looking at resolving your situation. Here's a video on how we're looking to resolve it for you. Um, have a look at it at your time whenever you have a moment. So now you don't have to have people on the phone waiting for an hour until they can speak to you. You can just create a video and say, hey, I have here, this is what we're currently doing to resolve your situation. Have a look at it at your time whenever you have a moment instead of them having to come to you and having to wait right, and being on your time, okay? Um, what this is uh, Maya Vision. What they did is, um, and so this is a case study that talks uh, exactly about that. We have a quote here that says, sending videos of, in this case, they sell software, but it doesn't really matter. Um, sending videos of new software features instead of plain update emails generated a 4X in engagement. It also eliminated the need for scheduling time in the customer's busy schedule. 
So again, you're self-serving somebody, you're respecting their time, and you're resolving something, right, in a very humane and visual way. And then finally, and I won't touch too much upon this, you can also start really start using video um, to communicate with, and, and basically actually to say to your, to your customers, hey, you can create a video for us as well, right? Maybe you want to talk about the service that we're providing for you create case studies using visual content. So we have a lot of customers that are asking their customers, would you like to make a video about us and about how we've been doing with video? So now they create ambassadors. So there's a whole topic around that. I won't focus too much because I think it's a little bit out of, uh, out of scope here. Okay. There's a, a, where I wanna get to is here is impact of video on net promoter score. Before I do, I think there might be some questions here. Are there any questions? I'll stop before I go into net promoter scores. Or anything that you would like to relate to or um, that I can help address. I think I had a lot of what you were just talking about. You need we just having a quick chat about it in the chat plane is, is so aligned to what we sort of explore and what we hear in the social housing space around sort of repetitive um, inquiries being handled potentially quite slowly because there are so many of them and sort of encouraging self-service where possible. And John from Plymouth, who we work with, who just said the solution is almost staring us in the face in terms of using video for this. It literally yeah. does. And I think I see here, John, you said, I look up most things on YouTube, car maintenance, dent removal. It's a really good point. Um, how to do X, right? That sentence, how to do X is, I, I, I looked at some stats of YouTube in almost every country. It's a top five keyword search term. How to do this, how to cook X, how to repair this, how to do that, right? It's all self-serve. So we can do the same thing. How do I repair this? How do I work with payments that? Whatever the question is, we can create a self-serve environment to do that. Then I wanna to talk to you about the impact of video on, on the net promoter score. So people actually promoting you as social housing providers, right? To friends, colleagues, family, okay? And what kind of impact video actually has on that, okay? So we'll get started here. Again, just remember, it, it's all about this place right here. We're delighting our customer. That's what we're focusing on, right? And once again, the most powerful way to delight customers, right? And, and the impact of delighting customers is that we get reviews and recommendations from friends and family, okay? So we have a case study here by, did by Sunday Sky, where what they did is they included personalized video like the ones, like the one you saw, right, where, um, somebody is, for example, tying a bow or, or explaining something, and they measured the impact that putting video and self-serve videos, what that has um, in terms of impact on, on NPS score, okay? So I won't distill, uh, go through all the information here, but what you see here is company NPS. So this is the average net promoter score of, of all these companies. So the average was around plus, 28 here. So the range typically of um, net promoter scores are minus 100 to plus 100. Minus 100 means that no one recommends you to friends, family, and colleagues. Plus 100 means everybody recommends you to friends, family, and colleagues. If you're on a zero, you're actually not doing bad. It means that half actually recommend it and half don't. Okay. So what we saw is that the program NPS, where they started including video to communicate with, with, with prospects and with customers, in this case with, with, with residents, right, um, had a positive NPS score of 58. And the total NPS, the company went up a whopping 48, 48 percent points, okay, 48 points. So video actually increased significantly the likelihood that they would recommend to friends, family, and colleagues. Here are some snippets where you can see what people say about these videos. They say, hey, being personalized was such a nice gesture, surprise. Love the personalized video, love the greeting. This answered all my questions, right? You see that here, thank you very much. Awesome video, easy to understand. Another question, answered all my questions without me even asking them. So to John's point, right? It literally gives the content and it gives people a way to self-serve and answer questions without having to hog the phone to ask questions. So very powerful stuff when we start using video, okay? So what I wanna then mention here is just the key takeaways for today. And then I'll leave it to some Q&A and maybe I can show some additional examples that might be relevant here, okay? 
First of all, customers demand to be delighted. Amazon set the bar. Other companies have followed suit. Netflix, there's these companies that are just doing customer experience amazingly. So we have to meet that bar. Video, as a second point, is a very powerful and unique and human approach to the customer experience. Okay. Third point, video is customer experience is effective as it is, one, driving customer satisfaction and net promoter scores, which helps you generate new business. And from a um, business perspective as well, it reduces time right, and costs of customer service delivery. And when you do that really well, it, be, well, it really becomes a driver for business growth. Those are the main takeaways. Um, that's essentially it for today. If you have any questions or we want to talk about specific topics, uh, feel free to ask me here in the chat. Um, I'll be happy to address them. That was great, Yannick. That was really, really, really good. Like I was, like I said before, it was so aligned to what, what we what we sort of um, what we explore in the social housing space, really around sort of options for self service and encouraging that sort of outcome online. Um, so yeah, absolutely great. I've got a couple of questions if if we haven't had any through just yet. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so I'd ask to begin with, how would you? So say someone on the call today is really interested in getting started with video, um, but in terms of getting buy in for this. How would you recommend measuring that videos having actual impact and some success? How, how would people know that it's working for them? How do, how do you know it's working for them? Yeah, so there's a bunch of ways that, that you can do that. And I can show that, but that's specifically to our software. I don't necessarily um, want to focus too much on our software, so I keep it a bit more high level. But a platform like Vidyard, a Vidyard um, video platform, what it does is it actually measures and analyzes exactly who is watching those videos and how much they're actually watching those videos. So what that means is when you start creating these self-serve videos, it's not just, hey, let's hope people watch them. We actually start seeing in the back end how people are actually watching them. So I'll show yeah. you what that looks like, okay? So you can get a bit of an understanding of that. Cool. I suppose seeing those, I suppose, would you say seeing those stats sort of tied into seeing video engagement with potentially MPS would be a good way of, you know, understanding that video is having a... For sure, for sure. Yeah. So so one, we can start seeing who's watching those videos on a name level, especially yeah. if they're already part of your CRM or of your database. We can see like, hey, this resident watched the, the self-serve video. Green means watch the whole thing 100%. Gray means the video hasn't been watched at all, right? And then there's parts here where it's yellow. It means that those areas have been watched more times. So what this tells us is we can see of our residents and of people in our e ecosystem who on a name level is engaging with which videos and how much. What that then further means is that we can start seeing in aggregate level how videos are actually working, right? So I'll show that here to you. And this is my personal folder, but you can imagine the same, mm -hmm. right? We can see here videos that have been watched. And then these are, these are the videos that, I, that I've created. You can see how many people are watching it. How long are they watching this on average? What's the average watch time? So it can learn. And what eventually what you want to achieve is what you can do in, in the videos as well is you can ask in the end of the video with a form. So, and I'll show an example of that. Um, I won't have an, an MPS score form. You can ask the residents, did this video solve your issue? Yeah. Or how happy were you with this answer or this solution? So then you can just have them fill out a form where they can get where, where they can give that information straight to you. For example, we have here a video where we use uh, Google Forms. So I'll show that here to you. You see that? Mm -hmm. So we can ask, hey, what did you think of this video? Or did this resolve on a scale of one to 10? How much did this solve for you? So we can actually grab directly from the video an NPS score to measure if that specific video self-served and gave people the answer that they were looking for. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you for that. Sure thing. Any other questions? Um, we had one from, from Mark came in. I think that's probably more one for the group really um, around if anyone would be interested or if anyone has already, considered repairs videos on their housing websites or portals. Uh, now I know in the portals that we've been involved with, Matt, we tend to encourage or recommend including video content for those repairs outcomes, which aren't necessarily the housing association responsibility. So we'd say, you know, actually um, unblocking your sink is your responsibility. Watch this video to find out how you might be able to do it yourself rather than, you know, 
calling us, which was something that, not something that we offer, or calling someone that to maybe who would charge you, try and do it yourself with this video. So I think that's what I'd say to begin with. But has anyone, has anyone else on the call used video content with success already, particularly in the repair process, out of interest? I think. Yeah, Matthew's saying, hey, you started making videos for tenants, such as bleeding radiators, changing light bulb, defrosting boiler pipes. Yeah, great. Yeah, that's perfect. That, I'm assuming they're all, are they all sorts of things, Matthew, that you tend to be asked quite a lot, are they, I'm assuming, to pop in videos in there, just avoiding that? Avoiding um, that concept, well, it? yeah, I was going to say, we, we, we've we looked into it, but the, the issue we've had, uh, or resistance we've had, is people doing disrepair to the, the property by following the video, maybe, you know, changing a boiler themselves or, you know, some some bigger stuff to start. But I, th I think right. there's definitely scope for that for the uh, the quick wins, isn't there? For yeah. being able to do that. So it's just interesting if anyone's done it so we can have a look and say, yeah, because I think there, there could be something in there. Cool. Yeah, and, and there is. And I'm just showing another example here. The, the, this is more from the from security, home security industry. Similar though, right? Because some things are, are similar, how to install, you know, a smoke detector or something like that, or how to replace the batteries in, in the smoke detector, which I'm sure is stuff that you get all the time. Um, so you can literally create videos here. And this is uh, Vivint, um, they're, they're in the States and they create all kinds of very basic videos, right? Where they explain, hey, this is what step-by-step how you actually replace this or how you do X or how you do Y, right? And they create a video and it's completely self-serve. They send this to all their customers and refer to it all the time. This is how you do it. And a lot of their customers are just self-serving themselves. And if they then still really have an issue, there is always a call to action in the video that says, hey, if you want, have a conversation with a consultant. So I'll show you an example here of what we do is if we're actually um, playing the video, you say like, hey, speak, speak with an advisor or speak with one of the landlords or speak with whoever that's that's managing the property if you're still you still have any issues so people can then fill out the information and now you actually know that they watched the video to try to self-serve themselves but they couldn't fix it or it was too difficult now you're offering to them okay if that didn't work maybe you want to have a conversation with us so feel free to fill in an information we'll give you a call back or what you can do is with HubSpot, for example, you can add to the videos here in the corner. You can ask, hey, if you still have any questions regarding the video that you just watched, just pop us a quick chat message right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can create a conversation going while you sell, tell them, hey, self-serve, but then we also have opportunities for you to get in touch with us or to ask questions really quickly via chat to see if we can help you out as well. Cool. Just had one pop in the chat, you need from, from huh? Barbara. Um, yeah. Barbara's asking, Barbara has a particular interest in accessibility, web accessibility and was instrumental in um, web accessibility for Anka Hanover, one of the housing associations that Prodi used to work with. So in terms of accessibility in, in, the, in the rooms of ensuring that web content can be accessible to as many people as possible, potentially visually impaired people, for example, what would, what would you sort of suggest? Would you suggest auto subtitles in the videos? Would you suggest, what, what would you say to that? Yeah, it's a good point. It's actually a question that I haven't haven't had before. So if you mean by accessibility to make it as wide as possible for as many people to watch it, I've I, I don't know if I've given enough thought to all the, the various people that would need help. But then a suggestion that Jacob, for example, said is that we can uh, we can, for example, auto um, auto caption videos, which is what yeah. we do with our software. So uh, to your point, if if uh, there are people that have difficulty with hearing, etc. Uh, we can at least create content. What would maybe other um, accessibility issues, uh, what are other accessibility issues that you find um, prevalent? And maybe I can give some insights in how we could potentially help there. Yeah, probably easier if I just say it um, than try to. Ah, it. It. Sure. So obviously, when we're doing web accessibility, we're looking across the board at design, use of colors, whether images flash, things like that, because there are obviously a broad spectrum of people who have struggles with certain things online. So I guess I know automatically I would think of subtitling, yep. but I was thinking about if you transferred that across from web to video, um, would there be particular guidelines for videos? Would there be particular color contrasts that, you know, somebody might need to build in um, to, to think about ensuring that everybody has a kind of good experience when they're online? you know, regardless of ability, disability, impairment. Yeah, so that's definitely something that we help with. But I mean, the, your, your best partner there is Proto, right? I mean, they, that, that's essentially UX and UI, right? Those are design 
um, decisions that are being done, right? And, and, and the proto team for sure will analyze. And, and for example, they do that, which is why we also work with them to really understand, hey, who is the target market? What are the buyer personas and the people that might actually engage with this video? And what would be the best customer experience from a design perspective, which includes color, it includes layout, it includes types of videos, et cetera, that would fit best for that customer. And a typical approach is to always do an interview and, a, and an understanding, a deep dive understanding into those customer um, or user behaviors. And then based on that, use the information and data to then create a design that makes sense for them. Um, so that's something that we do, but we're only a small component, right? Video, it's typically, uh, a, you know, a digital expert like Proto that goes along the, the whole spectrum, right? And basically looks and, and then finds a strategy that makes sense for them. But definitely it's something um, we, we, we should be considering uh, and it's definitely being done by various companies. Answer your question, Barbara. Okay, um, I had a couple more. If we've got, if not got any, just I suppose you need if, if you know. I think the use cases for video and incorporating this, particularly in the social housing space, is, is really clear and the benefits of that. Are there any um, are there any sort of challenges with you having such wide experience in implementing video into, into business processes and customer experience? Are there any particular challenges you like? Common challenges? Do people need a particular setup? Particular sort of software? Um, sort of hardware like cameras or lighting what so to get started with sort of producing videos or well i mean th there's a couple of themes and a couple of things that you touched upon there what a lot of people think when we when we talk about videos right the the the, the standard image of a video is that there's this production there's lights there's camera in order to create a video the reality however is is that our cameras on our phones and the webcams are now of such good quality that we can DIY, we can literally be behind a screen, and I'll show you an example here of a person that introduces, and this is more from a perspective of prospecting to generate new opportunities, but this can be in any type of video where you're creating a video literally behind your, your home webcam and you can create a video yourself. And Vidyard as a platform, we have a tool where you can create videos yourself super easily where it's like a three click process where you can record it. Um, so it's actually the barrier to entry to create videos yourself are very low from a software perspective. Now, from a perspective of doing videos well, right? Then there are some components that need to be taken into account, which is especially for people that you know don't do a lot with video and have never been on a video is to hold their hand and give them a structure to make a good video right so i know that you guys do that as well at proto is there is a whole training and training and development program where we can teach you best types of scripts what to write what to say how to get create a good experience on the video um how to behave, how to present yourself on a video, right? And then all, we do a bunch of coaching and training to make sure that you actually adopt all these best practices. So the video comes out in the exact way that you want to communicate with your customers. And that typically will take a bit more training and development uh, and, and, and help uh, to do that. But from a software perspective, um, it's, it's quite easy and straightforward to get started with this. That's great stuff. Okay, perfect. Well, I think we've reached uh, reached quarter to twelve now, so that was that was uh, really really great. You need thank you very much for taking the time to talk us through that today. I think it's made everyone sort of think really as to how how we can get more video into into social home space, particularly customer experience and encouraging self service online, which everyone's sort of tasked with doing anyway. Um, so yeah, if there's, if there's no more questions, um, again, thanks everyone for joining. Meg will pop over a pop over a follow up to everyone with the information and sort of key takeaways from today. Copy with the slides. Um, the recording will be available as well. Um, but no, if anyone's got any other questions for, for us at Proto or, or, or you need, you know, we can we can um, we can get those answered for you. And I'll, I'll pop the link to my meeting link in the in the uh, chat pane as well. But yeah, the next um, hive is two weeks time. We've got Jordan Lewis from Stockport Homes, one of our sort of long-standing partners, talking to us about Stockport Homes digital transformation journey. So I'm looking forward to that one. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you all there. Yeah, thanks again. Thanks, Yanif. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. We'll see you. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.